everybody, my name is Abel Isaac Bear from Bear Science Lab, and today, problem. So, today we're going to be solving a region's geometry problem. Now, what could that possibly say? Triangle PQR? <gasps> What's triangle PQR? Calm down, calm down, I'm sure you'll find out. Has vertices P, negative 3, comma, negative 1. Q, negative 1, comma, negative 7. Uh, <coughs> error Q negative one comma seven R three comma three one prove A B is parallel to P R and two prove A B is one half of P R. Wait, A B? First we don't know what P Q R is and now A B Well calm down, calm down. I'm sure you all know what A and B are, of course. They're the first two letters of the alphabet. So anyway, let's get started. First, let's draw those handy little coordinates. P, negative three comma negative one. Negative three, un, dos, tres. Negative one, un. Okay, now we have Q, negative one comma seven. What a bombastic number. Negative one, okay. Un and un dos tres cuatro cinco seis. Finally, oh wait, I should probably label these. So this is going to be labeled as P. That attack is going to be labeled as Q. And what is R going to be labeled as? Could it possibly be R? Man, I really made a mistake in my dialogue there. Tried to fix it and yet made another mistake. Oops. R! Alright. So now we are going to. First, what could I possibly use to connect these? Oh, yeah! Like, okay. So, this thing is probably gonna. Mess up my coordinate plane in one way or another, but who gives up? Oh wait, can't say that on this channel. Um. Oh no, that's bad. Um. Okay, think I got it. This meter stick is just so tall; it's reaching the roof. Oh man. I'm not kidding. Stop laughing. It's literally so tall that if I put it like this, it's reaching the roof. Okay. So, P, Q, R. So, now, what is A and what is B? Well, A is the midpoint. A is the midpoint of <laughs> PQ. Sorry, I was being electrocuted. Is the midpoint of <laughs> QR. So, now let's draw those. Wait, how do we draw those? We don't have coordinates. <laughs> Step number one. We're gonna first find out the midpoint of A and B. So, how are we going to find that ancient hidden lost treasure? Well, we're gonna use a midpoint formula. What's that? This video was sponsored by Midpoint Formulas Inc. Oh wait, we don't have a sponsor like that. The midpoint formula says that, let's say we have A, now, what is A the midpoint of? But Q P Q. So P has the coordinates. If I remember correctly, that and Q has that. So A must logically have that. What is that? Well, let me give you some nostalgia. Y two minus Y one over X two minus. <gasps> You really thought? How? 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 
truth minded could it be to think that the slope equation could be part of the midpoint formula? I'm disappointed, man. I really am. <coughs> so, what is this really? Well, we have x1 plus x2 over 2. Huh, you didn't really expect to see them united, did you now? y2 mi minus y1 over 2. Or am I wrong? This is y2, this is x1, and that is y1. So, x2 is negative 1, and x1 is negative 3. y2 is 7, and y1 is negative 1. So, a is negative 4 over 2, comma, 6 over 2, which gives us negative 2, comma, 3. So now, we know these coordinates. What about b? Well, we're going to use the same formula, except we're going to use it for q and r. Since r has the higher x value, once again, we're going to term it as 0.2. So, that gives us, this is x1 and y1, that is x2 and y2. So, b is going to be 3, which is x2, minus 1, which is x1 over 2, comma, y2 is 3, and y1 is 7. Alright, so that's going to give us 2 over 2, and 10 over 2, which gives us 1, comma, 5. So now, we also know the coordinates of b. So let's draw them right over here. So negative 2 comma 3 is negative 2 comma 3, right about there. And 1 comma 5 is 1 comma 5, right over here. So you might notice that AB is, looks parallel to PR. How do we prove that AB is parallel to PR? Well, we're going to cover that in step two. So, let's first find the slopes. Then, if they're equal, we know that they're parallel. So, the slope of AB is, well, we know the coordinates of A, negative 2, comma 3. So, once again, for the same reason, x value, we're going to term this as point 0.1 and that is point 0.2. So, what is y2? Well, it's 5. y1 is 3. x2 is 1. And x1 is negative 2. This gives us 1 plus 2, which if... This is equal to 5 minus 3 is 2 over 3. So now we know the slope of AB. But is this the same one for PR? Well, we're going to term R as 42, and you probably already know why. MPR equals Y2 is 3, Y1 is negative 1 over x2 is 3 and x1 is negative 3. This is 3 plus 1 that is 6 or 3 plus 3 which gives you 4 over 6 which can be simplified into 2 over 3. So now we've proven that these two are parallel because their slopes are equivalent. Now we're going to move on to step three.
which is proving number two, AB equals half of PR. So, well, let's say we have to find this distance. So let's say this is A and that is B. So the difference over here is five minus three, which is two. And the difference over here is one from negative two, which as we've shown is three. So now this, according to the Pythagorean theorem, must be equal to the square root of two squared plus three squared. What is the square root of two squared plus three squared? Well, two squared is four and three squared is nine. Adding them together yields 13. So now, what about PR? Well, if this is P, that is R, and we already know what rise over one is here, we have four and six. And if we take four squared plus six squared, we get 16 plus 36, which is the square root of 52. 52 is an integer multiple of 13. So it's actually the square root of four times the square root of 13, which yields two times the square root of 13. So we've proven this as well. Thank you everybody for watching. We'll see you next time.